If you're searching for the best AI coding tools to boost your development skills this year, then this video is for you. AI coding tools have taken the world by storm. Just enter a little bit of information into a prompt box and then an AI will build out an entire website, web app, iOS app, Android app, or whatever it is you're trying to build in just a few hours, where previously it would have taken you years of learning how to code to get anywhere near. The problem is that with AI moving so quickly and with so many AI coding tools popping up almost every single week, it can be completely impossible to stay up to date and figure out which is the best one for you and your specific needs. Luckily, over the last couple of months, I've been diving into every single AI coding tool out there, as well as all of the different and new AI coding models. And in this video, I've broken each of them down, looking at things like price, ease to start, and most importantly, the actual output at the end. Make sure you stick around to the end of today's video to find out what I use and what I've been building, and hit that subscribe button before we jump into the first tool on our list, which is Cursor AI. Okay, so spoiler alert, Cursor is one of my favorites. It starts at just 20 bucks a month, and you can also go through the free trial, which is free for a couple of weeks. It's well worth checking out and jumping into right now. One of the interesting things about Cursor is that it's actually a fork of VS Code. If you're not familiar with VS Code, this is the platform that most developers would use when they were self-coding manually before the dawn of AI. Now, this is important because it's got all of the original functionality of VS Code, plus Cursor's AI automation on top of it. Also importantly here, and one of the standout things of Cursor over the other tools on today's list, this is actually an app that sits on your desktop rather than you using it in a browser. This allows it to be slightly more powerful. And in my experience, it allows for a little bit more customization and ease of use. Now to get started with Cursor, you just head over to their website, sign up to the trial, download their platform for Mac or Windows, and then you can jump straight in. You can select any of a number of different models, including some of the best ones like Sonnet 3.7, Gemini 2.5 Pro, and the latest from OpenAI. And you can also set up some customizations here as well, such as giving Cursor some constraints over the languages you want to use. Then it really is as simple as creating a new folder and then prompting Cursor's agent on what you want to build, whether that's a landing page, a more complex app, or even an iOS app if you want. You then need to work through this conversationally and get it to pick up any bugs that you can then just copy and paste back into Cursor and get it to solve them like a junior developer. Now, in my experience of using Cursor, it's a little bit more challenging to get started with if you don't have any coding background. Remember, I can actually do a little bit of coding, although I wouldn't say I'm a proper coding developer, but I know some of the basics and I can figure my way around a lot of the common languages like Next.js, Ruby, bunch of others as well. If you have got some familiarity, it's pretty amazing because it's going to save you a lot of time. If you're right at the beginning of your coding journey, some of the others which are browser based on this list are going to have a little bit of a lower learning curve and allow you to get started a little bit more quickly. One of the other drawbacks is you do have to use some of the command line interfaces if you want to test your product. So you need to host things locally, which lots of developers will be familiar with. But if you're just starting off, this might be quite daunting and you might just want a solution that shows you what you're building immediately like Claude 3.7 can do on the main Claude website. That being said, it's pretty cost effective. It's pretty great. And I've built a ton of stuff with it in just the last few weeks alone. Next up, we've got Google's Firebase Studio, which caters to advanced programmers with a robust set of features that streamline the development process. It uses AI agents to allow users to transition from browser access to application development in minutes. The platform supports the import of various different repositories, making it really versatile for different tech stacks. The downside here is that it does struggle with some basic tasks like regular expressions, which might be limiting for some users. Firebase Studio's customizable development environments via Nix and flexible deployment options make it really powerful for serious developers, but again, perhaps a little complex if you're just starting out. Firebase, if you're not familiar with, is one of Google's main coding platforms, and it also allows you to deploy and is used in a ton of different web and mobile applications. When I jumped into it, it's kind of Google ecosystem is great. It's currently at the time of recording this video completely free, which makes the price really compatible too. And it plugs into Google's Gemini, which is a great coding model as we'll see later on. That being said, some of the outputs weren't quite as good as I was expecting, and it didn't quite understand and do exactly what I wanted, which is possibly to do with the reliance on Gemini, but it's definitely worth checking out 
if you're a mid to advanced level programmer. Next up, we've got Windsurf, which used to be known as Codium, which is really tailored for our SaaS enterprise applications, focusing on security and change management and analytics. It comes with both free and paid versions with paid starting around $20 a month. And it's got really powerful code completion and refactoring assistance, making it really valuable for maintaining high standards of code and security. In my opinion, WinServe is up there with Cursor in terms of what it can do and its reliability of outputs. A little bit like Cursor, you can select from many different models and then code within the application window, but with one big advantage being that you can see the output code actually rendered in real time making it a little bit faster and a little bit more accessible than tools like Cursor that require you to build locally. Next on the list, we've got Bolt, which is really great if you're a Mac user where it's fully optimized. It integrates seamlessly with other development environments, allowing us to interact with AI directly from our coding environment. This minimizes things like context switching and enhancing our workflows, and it allows for the creation of custom AI tool assistants tailored to specific tasks adding versatility for our various professional settings. It does require us to code online in the browser, and if you're a Windows user, it might not be that accessible right now. In my experience, the integration into existing coding tools is really good, and it's quite simple to get started with, with a simple large prompting window where you can build out a multitude of different ideas from. The price is really competitive, and again, it can plug into a range of different AI models, allowing for different outputs. The UX is also really nice here, and the speed of actual AI rendering of the code is really, really fast. I'd say that Bolt and Cursor are probably the fastest tools that I've tested on this list, with Bolt maybe with its latest release just edging it. Again, definitely worth checking out and jumping into and something that you can get started with pretty quickly without needing to download anything. Next on the list, we've got Replit, which has been around for a little while and covers the full lifespan of going from code to actually deployment and testing and optimizing our apps. Replit supports the creation and development of websites, automations, internal tools, and data pipelines in pretty much any programming language you can think of. It's super easy to use and get started with, but if you do want some deeper coding abilities, you're gonna miss out because it's only web-based at the moment. I found Replit to be a little bit less visually appealing than tools like Bolt or Cursor on this list, and it's also a little bit slower, but it does have a competitive price point starting at 20 $25 a month for the paid version. And because it's got that deployment built in, if you're not familiar with tools like either Superbase or Vercel for deploying your code to, then it might be a really great place to start. And there've been lots of really big app on Replit before moving on to other hosts in the future. So again, we know it's accessible for early stage businesses. Next up, we've got Lovable. This is one of my favorites and it comes from the Nordics. It's one of my favorites because it's so simple. It's got a really minimal interface and you can have minimal coding knowledge to get started. It allows for fast prototyping, it's got built-in deployment, but because of this, it does have limited customization and if you're an experienced developer, it might not be quite up to scratch. It uses popular coding libraries like React, Vue, and Angular, and it chooses the appropriate tool based on your app requirements and its own internal heuristics. The generated UI code is clean, modular, and follows industry best practices. And it also includes common interface elements like forms, buttons, display components, and more, making it really, really easy to get started with. It also comes in at around about $20 a month starting, so it's well worth checking out and trying if you're just at the beginning of your development journey. Another coding tool I just want to touch on on this list is V0 by Vercel. Now, this is a little bit different to the others because it focuses on web development and the front-end UI. If you're looking for a landing page generator, it's from Vercel who focus on deployment, and it's a really great way to just type in a couple of quick lines and then get a full-blown landing page out that you can then work in the conversation window to actually optimize around what you want. It's a really fun way to get started, and it's also got a library of UI components that you can potentially pull into your bigger coding tool like a windsurf or a cursor and use that. It's pretty accessible to get started with and it's cheap and it's really worth checking out. The final tool I wanna to touch on before we get into the large language models is GitHub's Copilot. So if you're an existing developer and you're working in GitHub, you've probably seen this and probably already use it. It can plug into your existing IDE and will offer suggestions in the code. In my opinion, it's good, 
But to be honest, if you're moving completely to AI or you're a solopreneur, some of the other coding tools on this list are way better because they're built AI first rather than just kind of helping with suggestions on your existing code. If you are working on much more complex problems, it's still a great co-pilot to have because it will help you think outside of your existing comfort zone and challenge you. And especially if you're a junior developer, it's a little bit like having a slightly more senior developer right next to you who can prompt you and help you do some things and save a little bit of time. But in my opinion, not the best on this list. Okay, now for the second half of this video, I wanna look at some of the LLMs themselves and touch on what I think are the best ones to use within these coding environments and apps. So first up, we're gonna to touch on Claude Sonnet. Spoiler alert, this is in my opinion, the best one. It produces the fastest, most reliable code out there at the moment. And if you've tried Claude on their own website, you'll know that it can produce content and then output that in the little Claude artifacts window. It acts as a collaborative partner in programming, facilitating code editing, testing, and making suggestions to make your code better. In my experience, Claude Code's understanding and navigation of complex projects and existing code bases sets it apart. So if you're trying to optimize an existing code base, it's a really good one to start with. The only con that I find from using Claude is that it can go off on a tangent, or sometimes you just need to get it to pause, take a breath, before actually going back in to figure out your coding problem. The next model I wanna look at is Gemini 2.5 Pro. This is a recent addition to Google's Gemini range and it's really great at coding. It's in Firebase Studio and it's very, very good at producing long lines of code in a short space of time. Now, when I was using it, the main drawbacks I found were that sometimes it just went a little bit off track and wouldn't quite do exactly what I was prompting it. So for example, if I was asking it to specifically look at a certain line of code, it might just ignore that and then go off and do its own thing. So you do need to rein it in. But again, if you're starting off and using Firebase where it's completely free, it's a really good one to look at. Next up, I wanna look at OpenAI's latest models, which on all the benchmarks seem to code faster and potentially a little bit better than Sonic. Now, when I used this in Cursor a little bit earlier on, it was still giving me a ton of errors that were popping up. And again, it wasn't doing exactly what I wanted. Now, that being said, it's still a great option and alternative if say, for example, you're running out of your Claude credits or you're just looking at trying to solve a problem that Sonic can't quite figure out. It's also very good at reasoning, which is probably the one thing that stands above all the other models on this list. If you put in a problem that you're currently struggling with in terms of maybe some code errors or warnings, then it's actually very good at figuring these out and giving specific solutions that will solve the code. Whereas in my experience, sometimes you could hit a roadblock with tools like 3.7 Sonnet, where you just couldn't go any further unless you kind of rolled everything back and started again. So again, definitely one to check out. The final large language model I tested and I just want to share with you was DeepSeek. This is great. It's relatively modern. It's very cheap. It's open source, which are some of the main benefits of it. It's also got great coding ability too. I'd say it's probably a little bit better than Sonnet 3.5, but not quite as good as Sonnet 3.7 in terms of the actual code it's outputting and when I was giving it some coding challenges. But having said that, if you are looking to do something on a budget or you're looking to self-host a DeepSeek instance, then it's a really good one to check out. And the best thing with all these models is you can mix and match all of them. So if you're using a coding tool like a cursor or a windsurf or a bolt, then you can switch these up or even allow the tool to pick the best one for you based on the circumstances, the current rate, the cost, and bring all of their goodness into your single application. Okay, so that was my video breaking down some of the best AI coding tools this year to help you get started and develop apps from scratch with AI. So which do I think are the best? Well, as you can probably tell throughout the video, in my personal opinion, having used all of them pretty extensively, I've defaulted back to Cursor just because I think it's the most professional. And for me, with a little bit of coding knowledge, that's what I will optimize for. It will plug into all of the LLMs on today's list. And if you combine that with Claude, it's pretty killer. I've been able to build out iOS apps, web apps and more in the space of a weekend, which is pretty crazy. If you're at the other end and you're just getting started, I'd highly recommend checking out Lovable and Bolt or just playing around with Claude in the Claude website and just seeing what you get back. The beauty is if you are starting out with this, what I'd recommend is you type in something into the chat window, get it to output some code, but then also make sure you review the code in the code window. And that way you can learn as you go along and also copy any errors into ChatGPT, 
into Claude, into DeepSeek, into Gemini, and see which gives you the best breakdown of what's happening so that you can learn and understand and figure out which are the best models for you. Now, I hope this breakdown has been really useful. Do you let me know in the comments below which your favorite is. I've popped up another video over here looking a little bit more in detail at things you can build with AI and startup ideas that you can get going on right now. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing and I'll catch you again in the next one. See ya.